welcome to Broken Grounds video series. I'm Karine, and today I want to give you a tour of our cold climate food forest. So we live here in Bozeman, Montana, and we're at USDA Hardiness Zone 4. Uh, so we have fairly harsh winters, um, but in spite of that, we're able to grow um, a lot of fruit trees and berry bushes and other beneficial perennial edibles in this food forest. Um, so this is a fairly young food forest. Uh, the, the oldest uh, things in this, in this forest, the oldest plants in this forest, are probably at most five years old, uh, and some of them are, are even younger than that. Um, but before we get started, uh, for those of you who don't know what a food forest is, a food forest basically mimics the architecture of a woodland ecosystem. But instead of the species that you see in a woodland ecosystem, we put in, we put in species and plants that are beneficial for us. Uh, so they're either things that we can eat, uh, they either help build the soil, uh, they're medicinal, they attract uh, beneficial insects, or all four of those things. Um, so let me take you on a little bit of a tour. Uh, so right here uh, at the beginning we have snow in summer which is a great ground cover. Obviously you can see it's gotten fairly big. Um, we also have some mint, um, which typically, spearmint here, which oftentimes does get a little bit out of control, mixed with some clover. A clover, again, is a nitrogen fixer. It helps to build soil. Um, these right here are choke berries, and you can see that the berries are coming on, uh, so we'll get a crop of choke berries um, this fall. Uh, walking through here, we also have some sedum, sedum stone crop. Uh, this is a great fall forage for bees, a uh, beautiful flower um, in the fall. This is champlain rose, so uh, we will get rose hips and we'll be able to eat uh, rose hips from this, really high in vitamin C. Uh, and then coming through here, um, there's lettuce here that has is almost now going to seed. Um, this volunteered here in the food forest uh, in this area grew up. I could have harvested some of the lettuce and now it's going to go to seed and likely the seed will then go into this area and um, create new lettuces next spring. Um, so right in here you have a whole understory or what's called the herb layer of the food forest where I have a mixture of clo uh, clover again, um, some lettuce, some walking onions, some vetch, which again fixes nitrogen and uh, attracts beneficial insects. The bumblebees love it. They're always around it. Um, there's some Johnny Jump Ups here uh, that are edible flowers as well. Um, and then here there's a small little honeyberry. Uh, and honeyberries are one of the new superfoods. Um, and so that will grow to be about uh, maybe three or four feet uh, in spread. Um, so walking through here, again, more Champlain roses um, that are flowering right now. Um, we have some tarragon here. Um, this is actually just a random ornamental grass that I got from a friend. Um, but tarragon is getting pretty large. Some more snow in summer. Uh, some chives that are going to flower. So again, things that are edible, but if they also go to flower, then they're beneficial and attract beneficial insects. Gooseberry here, um, that is just getting some green gooseberries on it. Um, very delicious. Echinacea, uh, again, a medicinal plant. Uh, and once it um, flowers, it'll attract a lot of great beneficial insects. Um, so more sedum, champlain rose. Right up here, we have a uh, pipestone plum. So this plum maybe gave us, I think, about seven plums last year. Like I said, um, this plum is, I believe now, it's five years old. This is its fifth season. Um, so in the next coming years, it will start to produce. Uh, so pipestone plum, um, lamb's ear, um, which is great, attracts beneficial insects once it goes to flower. The bees love it. Uh, and then over in this area here, we have a mess of currants. So we have both red and black currants growing here. Uh, and you can see below, we have a, uh, some red clover, again, fixing nitrogen, building the soil in this area. And I will say that here we are, we're June 19th here in Bozeman, and we haven't watered in this area at all. So uh, we established this with a lot of wood chip, 
a lot of manure. Um, but once it's established, we probably won't water in here until the beginning of July uh, or maybe even later. Um, but still, things are super lush. Um, more chives, sedum, stone crop. And here, across this berm here, there's a bunch of lettuce, again, that just kind of self-seeds itself every year. Right now, most of it is bolting and um, going to flower and then to seed, and it'll kind of reseed back along this berm. You can see some strawberries as well um, below that, that uh, kind of, I put some in there and now they're spreading into that area. Um, some little poppy plants. Um, some of these plants um, were intentionally here, you know, in, intentional in the design. Other plants I received from friends and I just put them in where I thought there was some space. So uh, this is a dwarf Russian almond um, that I'll produce. Um, and then next to that, we have some oregano, uh, another gooseberry, and then this, of course, is the primo permaculture plant. This is comfrey, um, super multifunctional plant, uh, attracts beneficial insects. Again, the bumblebees have been all over this, um, fixes nitrogen, uh, it's a mil mineral accumulator. And I will cut this back very soon now, um, probably in the next few days. I'll cut all of this back, I'll chop it up, and I'll mulch, the plant, mulch around this cherry tree right here. Um, and then it'll grow back mid-season and I'll probably have enough to chop it again in the fall um, and it'll contribute to building the soil in this area. And this cherry tree, we're pretty excited. It has a bunch of cherries on it. So this is the first year that this cherry has produced. Um, so we'll get a good crop of cherries. Um, right down here, we have more peppermint. Um, as you know, peppermint spreads, but in kind of the food forest context, it's not really a big deal if anything. It kind of competes with the grass, uh, which is great. Um, and then right over here, we have horseradish. Um, so we'll dig up that root or you can dig up that root. And then just below here, we have a few things like sedum, other types of sedum in here that attract beneficial insects, uh, more gooseberries, uh, this up here is a pear tree, um, and then below here is some oregano. So as you can see, we're repeating some of the plants um, that you've seen in other parts of the forest. And then back here, another comfrey. Now, I usually try to plant one comfrey plant next to a fruit tree. Um, so again, I'll be cutting this back soon. Um, and then we have raspberries right in back here that are out of control. We're gonna get a ton of raspberries. You know, typically the, in, in this kind of colder climate, if you want production and yield really quickly, um, the berry bushes are the way to go. So gooseberries, red and black currants, like we have raspberries. We've had um, raspberries, we had a great crop last year. We'll have another one this year. Um, and then over here we have rhubarb. Next to the comfrey, we have more lambs here, chocolate peppermint, and some bee balm back here. Another gooseberry. And then down in this area here, we have some hazelnuts. Uh, and they seem to be doing well. We haven't gotten production off of those yet. The two hazelnuts and then another uh, current right here. Uh, there's also valerian root right there, which is a great medicinal. So we have some asparagus as well growing here, and I have some in another part of the food forest too. And then over here, you can see our uh, beehives. So again, this, this whole food forest area is roughly uh, 200 feet from our house. Uh, so in kind of the zone three in permaculture. Uh, so all of this is on irrigation. Uh, I visit it, you know, once or twice a week. Um, and so I don't need to have it super close into the house. And that's why we can have our bees right here too. You don't want your bees super close into your house either. And they are benefiting from all the forage that we've planted in this area as well. And so along this berm too, I have a combination of different plants. And you can see some of it over here. There's salad burnet, there's flax, uh, 
and there's catmint and chicory in this area. Um, so just a lot of different diversity of different plants that are beneficial in some way. So moving down this pathway over here, um, you got to get in and weed a little bit. <laughs> but we have more dwar dwarf Russian almond. We have a little mason bee house right here. Uh, and this is an apple tree, uh, sweet 16. Again, salvia, another great plant that uh, attracts beneficial insects. Lemon balm as well, you can make a tea out of that. Uh, it attracts beneficial insects. Uh, it accumulates uh, minerals, uh, really good in terms of so building soil. Uh, more clover in here, more spearmint, more comfrey. And then here we have a columbine, uh, more chokeberry, um, also known as aronia, the scientific name. Um, we have some plantain growing right down over here um, in this area. Um, and then these right here are what are called josta berries. So we have uh, four josta berries. And josta berries are a cross between a currant and a gooseberry. So here I have more columbine, uh, rhubarb, and then there's some chamomile in here. And a lot of what ends up happening with these plants is that they uh, self-seed. Uh, so oftentimes I get a little surprise every spring in terms of what's coming up where. So the chamomile, for example, I didn't plant it in this area. It just went to seed and now um, it's in the certain areas where it will now <laughs> grow. Uh, and, and then it'll go to flower, go to seed. Uh, and continue to kind of populate this area. And what ends up happening is if there's something in an area where I don't want it, then I'll just end up taking it out. Um, so if we go down this pathway here, uh, you can see some of that flax again, and there's a bumblebee that just got onto the flax. Um, more horseradish, and then all down entrenched in this kind of basin area near this berm are uh, is asparagus. Um, so this is the second year for this asparagus, so we can't yet um, harvest it, um, but hopefully next year we can. Um, so this year is a sea berry, uh, also known as sea buckthorn. Uh, so again, a berry that's really high in vitamin C, uh, and really beneficial. Uh, this is the same way. Uh, which is a nitrogen fixer, good soil builder as well, and also great forage. Um, and then over in this area, that's motherboard there. So again, a variety of different plants in this area. You're looking for diversity. You're also obviously looking for things that are beneficial for you. Um, we recently, just last season, we sheet mulched this area. So added a bunch of cardboard, straw and wood chip to this area so I will be adding the herb layer um, into this area um, partly the season and the following season um, so again we built this food forest in stages we certainly didn't put it all in at once because that's a lot of plants and that's a lot of material um, but over these past um, five seasons we've been able to slowly put in um, different plants. We started with the fruit trees and the berry bushes first and then we started to fill in between them with the herbaceous layer. Because those herb layers are easier to grow um, and quicker to establish, you can put them in later. Um, and so just finally along this berm there's just a lot of different pollinator plants. Um, again, like I said, same way, which is a um, a nitrogen fixer, salad burnet. Um, there's some volunteer sunflowers in here, uh, cat mint as well, uh, some volunteer radishes that have gone to flower, uh, yarrow, uh, which is medicinal uh, and attracts beneficial insects. So just a variety of different and diversity of different plants in this area. 
So that's our food forest. Uh, like I said, it took us a while to establish it, um, but uh, it's thriving right now and over the next few years it'll start to look more and more like an actual forest as the canopy grows up, as the fruit trees uh, get taller. Um, but let me know if you have any questions uh, and thank you so much for watching.